Welcome to Hip Hop Now Podcast. If you're from the future, you know what to do. Get your ass out of here. Don't disrespect the legend. Hip Hop is here to stay. Let's get right into the business. What up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast, a podcast specifically designed to keep you caught up on all things hip hop, music, and culture that happened throughout the week. Big shout out to the Patreon supporters, past and present. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's those folks down at the bottom, you know, on the on the banner that's scrolling those names. Shout out to them for supporting the podcast. If you would like to know what that's all about, whatever perks come with that, visit the link in the description of this episode. No shout outs to any news outlets because we back to back. We back to back. I call myself like, yo, you took a week off, you know, get some health issues done. Come back. Let's just do an episode to recap what's happened since then. Talked about the whole Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Metro Boomin' Future, J. Cole situation, and was satisfied, uploaded, and boom, J. Cole responds, not only with a, a response to Kendrick's challenge, lyrically, seven-minute drill, we'll talk about it, uh, but also he drops what, in my opinion, was a highly anticipated mixtape, I guess, <laughs> called Might Delete later and uh typically i don't do episodes solely based off of one album review i don't do that no more i kind of incorporate that within the entire show but since this is a special occasion including a hot topic on social media as far as the battle goes or if you want to use that word battle um i felt the need like we should talk about it real quick you know what i'm saying talk about the project review the project. Yes, I've listened and I've listened more than once. And also talk about J. Cole's response and how I feel about that and what could come next. Who knows what's going to happen this weekend? Kendrick Lamar could... I'm not going to do another episode. I'm just... <laughs> if Kendrick answer after I've already recorded and uploaded this, I'm not... You ain't going to hear what I got to say until the next show next week. Um, but I'll say this. Hip-hop is at least the conversation around hip hop is reinvigorated. The conversation around hip hop lyricism is reinvigorated when we have situations like this. High profile artists who have a certain level of skill that choose to battle each other. People go online, people talk, people show their allegiance. It gets kind of crazy. Uh, so let me put a few disclaimers out there for those who may be new to my channel. And if you like what you hear or see, subscribe. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers. We need your help. Make it happen right now. Uh, for those who don't know, J. Cole has been teasing this project for a little while now. Uh, maybe you were a little blinded by the fact that this whole battle thing came into play and now you, because I saw some people like, yo, J. Cole gave him a whole project. Dog, this project was coming out anyway. We've been talking about it. he has been doing promo for it. Might delete later the hashtag. You can find it weeks ago, right? It was always a part of the plan. Now, response to Kendrick, that's new. Um, but Mike Delete later dropped. The only reason why I call it a mixtape and not an album is because the album is also being promoted and that's somewhere down the line. It's called the fall off, right? So everything that we've seen thus far from J. Cole as far as features versus here and there and obviously this project are all kind of like promotional tools leading up to this big album from him. Uh, which I appreciate because, you know, J. Cole tends to, he doesn't, he doesn't completely go away between albums. He'll give you features here and there. But lately, I felt like, you know, his features been crazy lately. So there's a little bit of hunger there. And for a dude like him who, um you know, kind of made his way on some, 
mixtape stuff first, it seems only right for him to do something like this. So Mike Delete Later, which is available everywhere, it's even as a mixtape, uh, is about, uh, what, 12 songs and 43 minutes uh, as far as the total time. Features include Cameron, Young Dro, Gucci Mane, uh, Abso, and Daylight for you battle rap people, uh, including uh, uh, people from his, uh, what's his name? Ba- How do you say homie name? Bass? Boss? I don't know. Uh, I kind of like him, but I don't think I ever heard him say his name. Um, and I'm not not a huge fan. Kind of like when I hear him, but not enough to go listen to more music. Heard the first album years ago. Uh, but nevertheless, if you watch this channel, if you listen to this podcast, you know I review albums by uh, giving it at least three listens. At least. The first listen is for impressions. The second listen is to listen a little deeply to the lyrics and the music and the concept and the, and the sequencing of the project. And the last listen is kind of to confirm my thoughts, positive or negative. And for those that can't wait or don't care about the context in which how I feel, just want to know, do you like it or you dislike it? I'll say I like it. But let me explain. To me, Mike Delete Later is nothing that a J. Cole fan has never seen. It's just not. It's just new J. Cole. It's J. Cole showing the different styles he's shown throughout his career. Um, That includes giving you bars on some boom bap stuff. That includes, um, you know, rapping over trap sounding beats with a different flow. Um, But that also includes, and it's really only one track, and it's probably the J. Cole I like the least, the singing J. Cole. Raise your hand if you, I mean, obviously somebody likes it. That's why he's done it throughout his career. But I don't see why he does it. Maybe he likes to do it. Or maybe he go, maybe he go to show, he perform the song where he's singing Paula Abdul. Yes, that's a real thing. (laughs) And he see the reaction from the crowd. He knows they like it when I do that. Right. And he might, even hear people like me who like, nah, don't, yo, why are you doing that? And the only reason why, <laughs> the only reason why I don't like it, it just don't sound good to me, right? It's not the worst singing I ever heard in my life. It's just to me unnecessary for someone who's so skilled on the other end of hip hop that this singing on a whole record is a gimmick and it's not even a gimmick that works for you. That's my whole point. It's not that he can't sing. Um, He could do what he wants. It's just a simple fact that I don't think it works for J. Cole um, to me as a fan. Some people like it, like I said. For me, it's an instant skip. Like, oh, word straight up now? Tell me where that skip button at. Boop. If I want to hear Paul Abdul, I'll listen to Paul Abdul. And I'm not even going to listen to Paul Abdul, so there you have it. Uh, But don't get it confused. There's plenty of bars on here. There's, a, there's some very dope records on here. Like I like the first song, Pricey, uh, with, with Ari Lennox. Like That joint's dope. Crocodile Tears is dope. I'm not excited by Ready 24 featuring Cameron, which is basically I'm Ready, the 2024 version. The original one was Cameron and Dipset's, most notably Drew Santana. And what I think I don't like about it is... It's not a spin on that beat. It's basically that beat. And J. Cole is kind of rhyming. Well, his delivery is like Jules Santana. And I kind of feel like Jules Santana was a big, like an equally as big part of the success of that record back in the days. Now, I get that Cam and and Jules and Jimmy and them, they kind of like on different sides and all that. But don't do that record if you ain't going to have Cam and Jules, Jules Santana on there. Like, and then you basically doing his cadence. Like, it just felt weird. 
again, J. Cole, way nicer than Jules Santana to me. I've never been the biggest Jules Santana fan, but I'm not going to take away things that he did back then that I thought was dope. And his verse, I'm ready, was a part of that energy. Like, it was. So it just kind of felt weird. But if we call it a mixtape, well, this is fa it's fair game. Like, I'm not mad at it. So there you have it. Um, other songs I like, Sticks and Stones is dope for if you want some bars or whatever. Um, and again, overall, I think if you're a J. Cole fan, you're going to like this because he's giving you exactly what you want. I, like, again, I'll say it again. I doubt the majority of the fans are like, why he not singing more? Nobody's saying that. Uh, but if you like J. Cole spitting over a trap beats, if you like J. Cole having, uh, J. Cole having bars and, and boom bap beats and, you know, being real lyrical, I think you'll like this joint. Honestly, tweak a couple of records and you probably could have called this the final album. So it makes me wonder what the fall off is going to sound like, because if it's anything close to this, I think it might be a wasted moment. And the only reason why it would be a wasted moment is because I think this Kendrick and Metro boom, booming and future and this whole pick a sides battle thing, it's kind of got in the way of Ken, of J. Cole's rollout for this album, right? Because I've seen people online talking about the record we about to talk about, right? The response to Kendrick and not talking about the project. Like, do y'all even like the project? You know, and I'll say this. Since we're getting into seven minute drill, that's the response record. There are songs on this very project that are better than that. And that's kind of a shame. Um, so the song is called Seven Minute Drill. It has a beat switch. It starts out with a beat that beat and flow from J. Cole that really sounds like something Drake would do more than anything. And maybe that was the plan, but that seems kind of stupid. I mean, well, let Drake take the first half then. Uh, but Drake probably like, nah, you're going to get the boom bap and then try to have me do what I do on some diss stuff. <laughs> uh, but but then it switches to a beat that's more hardcore and you get a little bit more um, detailed bars from J. Cole. He still didn't say his name. He still sneaked this and like Kendrick said. And I think that's what's disappointing about it. Now, some people will be like, what you want is light jabs. You're right. It's light jabs. This is, it is light jabs. You, you're absolutely right. Light jabs. Um, but we're not, we not here for light jabs because the thing is, is Kendrick's bars were light jabs, but his energy was like, I'm ready for a full-on fight. So to me, it's like Kendrick swung on you and he didn't land. And it's like you purposely miss your punch because he your brother. I'm confused, J. Cole. What, what, what are we doing? You don't have to put everything out. But that position of it's like swatting the fly, but nobody believes you, fam. I don't care what Kendrick does on records now. He's still K-Dot from Compton. And the minute he goes in that bag, have you have we learned nothing from Ether? Have we learned nothing from Ether? Listen, children, I, adults, y'all get it, but children, we're gonna talk to the children real quick. J. Cole quoting Takeover, basically. Four albums in 12 years. I could divide. Calling his first album a classic saying the second one was boring, but they gassed it. You talking about To Pimp a Butterfly? Where were you when, when was this ever? I know that Get Rich or Die Trying and To Pimp a Butterfly, two very different albums, two very different Kendricks. I don't disagree with that. But that's what that's what we give him flowers for, right? Like being different. 
that's why I'm, at least most of us, that's what I thought. That's what we were saying up until Ken, uh, J. Cole said something different. Um, we were giving him flowers because every time he came out with an album, it wasn't the same as the other ones. And most people thought them were good, thought it was good. Now, what he had to say about Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, I could see some people feeling that because did one thing about that album, while it was great from an artistry standpoint, um, concept albums to that degree don't really have that much replay value in a genre where people like to get dressed to this, get hyped for that. You know, oh, it's summertime. You're not putting on big... If you got to choose between Kendrick Lamar albums, you're never putting on that one for any of those modes. <laughs> but are you doing that with J. Cole? I don't. And I own all his albums, even the one I don't like. And it's the same thing with Kendrick. So it just seemed like what he was saying was uneven because Jay-Z also said something, J. Cole, we don't believe you. You need more people. We can't, you, you can't say that about, especially you cannot say that about the pimp of butterfly. That's just invalid. But what the children tend to miss is they're quoting that line so heavy as if Kendrick has been putting out so many duds since Good Kid Mad City. And they forget when another man who J. Cole is quoting on a song he's quoting, thought another dude wasn't the dude he used to be. And he effed around and found out with a song called Ether. Now, revisionists, because that's what we're really talking about, revisionists would like to say Jay-Z won the war, which is so stupid. <laughs> because if Jay-Z lost the battle, there is no what war what are you talking about it's hip-hop it's all battling until it's done you know what i'm saying anything outside of that does not matter because fates can change Nas could be rich and jay-z could be poor and then Nas help him out i'm not gonna say Nas won the war because he helped jay-z out he helping a man out you know why because they were cool and that's basically what this battle in this song is because I feel like when Kendrick, well, not with Kendrick, when J. Cole was talking about Kanye, for example, I could feel more venom and uh, reality and what he was saying about Kanye than anything. But he's just responding to Kendrick because it feels like he feels the need to respond, you know, because he got to protect his reputation in some way. But it also comes across as lazy to lean on a few things that aren't necessarily true, you know, um, and forget what we think. You couldn't have told me in a million years that J. Cole feels this way about these things. It's essentially why he keeps saying, my brother, my brother, my brother. He don't really want to do this, but it's fine because I don't look at it as an L for J. Cole. Hell no, it's not an L for J. Cole. Honestly, I'm good with these two responses, you know, right here. Hold on. Like my, my joint going crazy because we, we had a earthquake hand Jersey. So everybody texting, uh, but I'd be cool if the light jabs between Kendrick Lamar and J Cole ended right here because we want that other dude. When I say we, I'm talking about Kendrick and Compton. Okay, we want Aubrey. We want the do. We want the catalyst for all of this. See, that's the problem. You know what I'm saying? You ever been in a situation on on your block, group of friends, maybe even your team, maybe you play for a team, and you know the wrong two dudes are fighting when they probably should be jumping the instigator. And the instigator quiet because he's just so happy he that the smoke ain't on him. That's what Kendrick need to do. Kendrick need to just say, yo, I apologize, Cole, da 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 da, da but don't play me the weekend spar whenever. But back to Aubrey. <laughs> That's what we need. So long story short, might delete later. 
is a good project from J. Cole. I mean, the brother been on point. The diss, the diss is cool. In some ways, I, I, I got to be honest, in some ways it kind of spoils my anticipation for this project because now it's all people are talking about and it's at tip of the tongue and it's hard to digest the other records without looking like, is he talking about him on that? Like, it just, I don't know, it's taken away from my enjoyment. But nevertheless, it's still hot. Um, I think there's a couple of songs here and there I skipped. Um, nowhere near skipping like half the project. Um, is it in my top five of the year? No, nah, because it, it feels like a mixtape. It feels like here's some songs that I'm not going to put on the final album. That's what it feels like. And I don't see any problem with that. If you're a person who a J Cole fan and you, you know, you're anticipating his new album, but you need something to hold you over. I think this is dope enough. What do you think about J Cole's new project? Might delete later. Are you feeling it? Are you a J Cole fan? Does it make you a J Cole fan? What do you feel about his response to Kendrick Lamar? Light bars. You thought they should have been better. This was good enough. Light jabs from both, but you waiting for the main course? Leave your comments in the comments section below on YouTube. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers. So if you like this content, subscribe. But most importantly, share it with people you know enjoy this kind of content. Until next time, y'all. I'm not a critic. I'm a fan. Peace.